About a year ago, I took a look at Fedora Kinoi in a long-term review. I used it for about four months, and I would not call that review positive at all. In fact, I went so far as to call it a buggy, beta-like mess. And a lot of the blame for that bugginess I did place on KDE, but I wasn't kind to the distro at all. I used it for a long time, and you could tell right at the beginning of the video that I was just fed up with that distro. Uh, in, in fact, so far that I actually had uninstalled it before I even recorded the video. I just wanted it off my computer. Now, it has been, like I said, over a year since that video, and with the prompting of George Castro, the gentleman behind a lot of the immutable stuff that goes on in the Fedora ecosystem, so he's behind you Blue and a couple other really big, really interesting projects, he asked me several months ago now to take a look at the U Blue version of Fedora Kinoi, and I have. I ha I've had it installed on my laptop for several months. In fact, when I started, Fedora 37 was the primary version of Kinoite. Now we're on 38, and I'm presuming that 39 will be here pretty soon. So I've had it installed on my laptop for quite a while, and I have some thoughts about it. And I will say this, first, just before we even jump in, but actually before I say anything, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It would really help the channel. But the first thing that I will say is that when I made my long-term review of Kinoite before, I had a problem. And my problem was that I really didn't get immutable distros. I understood some of the technical aspects of it, but you could tell that I'd only spent, you know, a few months with it and it wasn't my daily driver. And I really didn't understand what the hell it was going on. And I didn't understand why an immutable distribution was good. You could tell. Like I, I went through and rewatched this video. I'll actually show you the video so you can see. This was my video and pay attention by the way, to this particular error. We're going to talk about that again here in a few minutes. But, you know, I, you know, I made that video and I just, I didn't know what immutable distros, you know, really were good for. And I will say that a year removed from that, I am a little bit more well-versed on immutable distros. I've used them more. I understand them, them more. I understand the limitations and the benefits, all that stuff. I understand it more. Now, I'm not going to go so far as to say that I'm an expert. I am not one at all. Still an eternal noob. Always will be one. So just we'll get that out of the way. But I understand them more. So I think that this long-term review that I'm doing today, even if we're not going to call it that, will at least be a little bit more informed than the previous one. So with that out of the way, let's actually take a look at my laptop. So I have a fancy dancy new capture card and I'm going to show you my screen on my laptop. So this is me doing stuff on my laptop. Hopefully this actually works. And as you can see, this is Fedora 38 Kino White. That's the most recent Ublue version of Kino White. I've, like I said, I started with Fedora 37. I've rebased to 38. Uh, probably a couple months ago at this point now. It's been quite a while since I rebased to 38 and I've been using it on this laptop ever since. And overall, let's just start off with some of the positive things. I will say this, that it is much less buggy overall than it was when I did my first long-term review. That's absolutely 100% true. I had fewer issues when it came to actual getting KDE Plasma to be very stable, and I'm happy about this. In fact, I'm using the Wayland session of Plasma right now, and it works fine. And it's, you know, displaying the output onto another computer fine. It will do screen capture just fine. It's worked very good. In fact, I've done most of my Python course learning on this laptop. I have VS Code here and all the stuff hanging out on another uh, activity. And it's just worked out really, really well. It's overall, it's been a very, very stable experience. Way better than it was the last time I looked at Kinoite. So I have to question how much of that is the fact that this is the Ubu version and how much of it is, is that it's not the actual official Kinoite version. I don't know and I can't answer that question for you guys. But just to know that the Ubu version, at least so far, has been way, way better in terms of stability than the original Kino White was when I reviewed it over a year ago. So just putting that out there in terms of stability, because stability was my primary complaint when it came to Kino White last time. This time, much better. Now, I will say this, and this is a big proviso, is that they're different computers. So the review I did last year was done on my main machine with multiple monitors and 
as you guys know, I always have problems with KDE on this main machine. This time I've been doing it on this laptop and that could explain some of the differences. I don't know that for sure, but it's something that I want to be transparent about. They are different computers, so that's that. Now, let's move on to just one thing. Now, if you remember, I told you to pay attention to this here error, right? And I, I go back here because one of the things that I spent a lot of time talking about in that initial review was that Plasma had some issues when it came to compatibility with the immutable file system. And you always got an error when you're trying to install a global theme. So one of the things that I hoped was that that would actually fix. So if we go to settings here, we go to appearance, and then we go down to install new theme, and then we restart this to highest rated first, and then we scroll down. It doesn't really matter which one we use. We just go ahead and install this one here. It doesn't matter. And then it'll do this thing, and then it'll ask for your password. It'll do that here in a second. It will take a little bit. So you'll enter your password and hit enter, and then you get the exact same error as a year ago. It's their different version Fedora. So the Fedora that I used in the review was 36, I believe. This is 38, and we're still having the same plasma problem that we had on a year ago. So why that is, I still don't know. There's something to do here, I'm guessing, and this is just me being, you know, 100% guessing, is that there's some kind of incompatibility between Plasma and actually using this on an immutable distro. I'm guessing that that's the issue. How you'd go about getting around it, because I did it actually install one theme. I don't know how I did it. That was ages ago. Oh, actually, so it's, gonna, it's still technically going on in the background, and then you get the, the error again, and... Eventually, maybe it'll pop up. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, in fact, I've only had it pop up as installed one time with the Dracula theme. I don't know what's going on there. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But that's honestly the only bug that I came across in terms of using this day to day. It was a big bug because I liked to customize my plasma. And the fact that I wasn't able to do so, at least much, I, I did finally get the Dracula theme to kind of work. But... It's not all there. There's some things that are blatantly missing. They're using the wrong icon theme for whatever reason. I'm not sure why that happens, but it, it's there. But honestly, that's the biggest bug that I noticed. So the thing that I need to talk about today is uh, the differences that I've noticed between the stock Kinoi image that you would get by downloading the, the ISO from Fedora and rebasing a silver blue install to Kino White from a U blue image, which is what I've done here. So this is a U blue image of Kino White. Now, if we go to Firefox down here, I actually have loaded up all of the images that U blue offers, and they offer way more than they did the last time I looked at U blue. There's a ton of them here, and a lot of them are duplicates that that are meant for different scenarios. So whether or not you you're using you know, NVIDIA drivers, or you're looking for something that's a little bit different. You know, a lot of them have specific use cases for specific hardware, specific development purposes and stuff like that. So they have a lot of different desktop environments and use case scenarios in terms of images that they offer. Now, I'm obviously using the Kino White one, which is down here, and they offer quite a few of these, and these are the ones that I've used. And this is how you update from the 37 to 38. You take this and you just rebase it. And this computer actually started off on a stock image of silver blue, then rebased into the U blue version of Kino White. So the question I had at the beginning, and one of the reasons why I was confused as to why George Castro asked me to take a look at this, is like, what's the difference, right? It's just Kino White. That's what I thought it was, but that's actually not true. And if we actually take a look, and I'm going to switch here actually to my main computer, just because that's where I have it open. If we go here, we can actually see that there are some differences between the regular stock version of Kino White and what Ublue has to offer. So the one that I really have found myself using the most, and if you've watched my channel for you know a few months, you'll notice that I'm that I'm a big, big fan of Distrobox. And one of the things that they do is they install Distrobox by default. So if I actually switch back to the, the laptop here and I open up a terminal, we can actually do distro box enter arch like so and then you now you'll see i have an arch linux distro box i've been using that for certain things and you guys know 
I love district box. So I like that particular change. That was really nice to, to see. They also have, and I hate, I'm sorry to switch back and forth between this on you guys. I'm still getting used to the whole having two machines in front of me. It kind of, it's kind of weird. But they also had, uh, add in all of the codecs that you need in order to make Fedora work with basically everything. Stock standard Fedora does not come with that. You have to add those things yourself. So every Ublue image already has this. There's a whole bunch of UDEB rules and service units. So that allows, if I am correct on this, and I may or may not be, I'm, again, eternal noob, but basically that allows for better hardware support for peripherals and stuff, and probably more than that, right? The only times I've ever had to mess around with UDEB rules is when I tried to get a weird piece of har hardware accessory to actually work. So when I was using a, st uh, not a Steam Deck, but a Stream Deck, I had to add add UDEB rules in order to get that to work. So so the Ublue version of Fedora King White comes with some UDEV rules there. They've also included a way to configure supported mice via Piper, various other tools that they have a complete list of package to describe. It also sets automatic staging for updates for the system. Now, I think what this was supposed to mean was that updates happen automatically. And they say that for flat packs as well. Now, I like I said, I've been using this for months and admittedly, my laptop is not on all the time, so I'm assuming that that has something to do with it, but I never, not once, saw an automatic update. I had to do them all myself. Now, maybe there's something that you have to switch on in order for that to work. Not sure. Never actually looked into it because I didn't see this until, uh, you know, I was well into the, to the project, but not sure what I did wrong there. But supposedly, automatic staging and updates to flat packs happen twice a day. So if we go back to the actual laptop here and we get out of the distro box, the biggest differences that I saw is that it feels like a more complete package. It comes with a better version of the containerized system distro box than Fedora, the regular Fedora Kimo it does, which comes with Toolbox. I've always preferred DistroBox over Toolbox. It just feels more complete, more user-friendly. The documentation for DistroBox is better than in toolboxes, so I, I prefer that change. And overall, it's just felt like a more stable and coherent system than the stock Kinoa image. Now, the one thing I can't say is whether or not the stock Kinoa image has gotten better from when I tried it, you know, a year ago. I don't know. I haven't tried it, so I'm not sure. But just using the Ublu version of Kino White for the last several months on this laptop has been a very good experience. Now, one of the things that I should talk about that I was not able to talk about in the first video I made about this is what immutable distros are good for and spe specifically what I've experienced running this as an immutable distro. So as I've learned more about immutability and all this stuff, one of the things that I've come to realize is that if you want a Linux distribution that is really literally set it and forget it, you want an immutable distro. My laptop has been, has often goes through periods of disuse. So sometimes I don't even touch it for six weeks. You know, it just sits there. I don't do anything with it. it you know, it, the battery dies eventually and, you know, I have to come charge it or whatever. And then I do all the updates. And sometimes that happened. And that happened a couple times while Kino White was on here. Because of my disuse, I was always a little worried about having to come back to a crap ton of updates. Now, you guys got to remember, I come from a history of using rolling release distros, and I've also used Fedora in the past. So I know that if you leave Fedora for quite some time without updating it, you're going to eventually find that there's a ton of updates to be had. And... For the most part, it usually goes just fine. Even with regular stock standard Fedora, if you leave your laptop for a couple months and do an update when you come back to it, it's probably going to be work just fine. It's not Arch Linux in the fact that you can't go that long without updating something, without having some problems. It's not that bad, but still, you know, I was a little worried. But my worry was for nothing because it worked just fine. When I came back, Fedora 38 was available and a whole bunch of flat packs were able to be updated. The one thing that I will say about this is that, and this is just a generalized thing about apparently Silver Blue and Kino White together, it is that the updating mechanism, at least the way that I understand it, is kind of not together. So if you do RPM OS tree upgrade, you're going to see that your image is somewhat updated. 
uh, but it doesn't catch everything, which is disappointing, and you'd think that it would, but it doesn't. So what I found actually was the best way to update your entire system was actually to go to Discover, and when you go open up Discover, then there's a, an update tab here, down here at the bottom, it will say update, and you can do all of your updates here. Now, that did take a long time, and I will say this, that every time I did an update, whether it was RPM OS tree up, upgrade, or if it was through discovery, my computer sounded like it was going to start flying away, for, you know, because the fans were just absolutely insane while it was doing that. I don't know if that's an experience you'll have if you run it on a laptop, but I will say it got very, very loud and very, very hot. Uh, that That's... I haven't really had that on any other distro, so that's just something I thought I thought would mention. And I know I'm, I've kind of meandered away from the immutable aspect of all of this stuff, but I'm, I'm going to talk about it more here in a second. But uh, you guys should be 100% used to me just rambling through my videos uh, by now, if you've watched my videos before. So anyways, the update mechanism does seem a little bit, you know, all over the place. So just if you're going to use Kinoite, use Discover because it's going to, to encompass everything on the system. Not only regular application updates, but also it'll get you to Fedora updates. And what I was actually surprised about, something that I hadn't realized that the KD devs had baked in, was the ability for them to do firmware updates. So you can actually see I have a UEFI update there now. It also did a BIOS update and an Intel firmware update. All that stuff did, it, it worked really really well was very surprised because that doesn't happen on every laptop and it worked actually fairly well on this one so I, I was quite happy with this so like i said if you want a distribution that is really really set it and forget it and you don't have to worry about having to constantly work you know pay attention to where the upgrades are and all that stuff an immutable distro is where it's at it really does work well for just putting it on a laptop and it just working. I've been very, very, very surprised at that because when I heard about the whole immutable thing and we first started learning about it, you know, as, as a Linux community, one of the things I heard and one of the things that I kind of understood to be true was that it took away some of the freedoms that you had to mess around with your system because the, re the, the file system, the base root file system is read only, right? You're not supposed to mess around with it. And that affects what you can install it affects what you can customize it affects what you can mess around with all that stuff right it just it feels more limiting than a traditional linux distro but as i've used the immutable aspect of kinoite for the last few months and on several other tries with immutable distros one of the things that i've come to realize is that if you use the tools that they provide you none of the immutable aspect of your distro actually means anything to you. So if you use DistroBox or Toolbox, it doesn't really matter, and you use that to install the things that you need to install that would normally have to be installed at a root level, you're going to be good to go because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to use these containerized environments like DistroBox or Toolbox to do your stuff in those environments instead of messing around and installing it on your base system. That's what those containerized packages using Podman or Docker are supposed to do. That's why they're provided for you. And like I said, I prefer DistroBox, but Toolbox does basically the same thing. It's just not quite as well fleshed out, I don't think, as DistroBox is. But the point remains is that that's where you're supposed to do the things that you would normally do in your root file system. You're supposed to do those in those containerized environments. And back when I first did that Kinoite review a year ago, I didn't know what DistroBox was. I knew that Toolbox existed, but I didn't know how to use it. Uh, and some most of that was my fault for lack of research, but also it just the documentation at that point was really bad. It's gotten a little bit better since then. But the idea behind using this alternative, you know, containerized system just didn't make sense to me at the at that point. Now, these days, I'm a DistroBox fanboy. I know exactly how it works, and I understand the benefits of using it, not just to get applications that you can't get otherwise, but also the ability to, on an immutable distro, have a fully functioning, regular root file system that you can do whatever you want with without worrying about the immutable aspect of it. And it all just is containerized, and you don't have to worry about messing anything up on your regular 
distro, the, the, the base level immutable distro. You don't mess around with any of that stuff and you can therefore have full control but in a containerized and well-supervised and idiot-proof way of messing around with stuff without having to deal with any of the, the horrible things that could happen if you were to, say, delete your Etsy directory, whatever. You know what I mean? So that's, I think, the primary difference I have now between a year ago is that I understand that that immutable aspect of your distribution isn't a limitation. It's just a different way of using your, your computer. And you add on top of, the, of it with the new technologies of DistroBox and, you know, Docker and Podman and all this stuff, you can have the same experiences you've always had, but with less risk. You don't, ha you don't have to worry about having to always be careful with that underlying system because that underlying system is just there. You don't touch it. It has images of that base system and you continue to move forward with new images every time there's an update and you can go back and forward if you need to to different versions but mo for the most part you just simply use your computer and you don't worry about any of this stuff you just don't worry about it and that is what has been so good about this experience this time with Kinoa is that i've just been able to use it now like i said there have still like i showed still some kde bugs that just you know uh, kde you're cute, but you, you need to figure your shit out, right? You know, sometimes you, you KDE KD can't help itself but to be buggy sometimes. That's just, yeah, you're supposed to stay on there, bro. But anyway, <laughs> anyways, you know, it's just, it can't help it sometimes. But the base level distro itself has been rock solid and very, very good. Overall, those are my experiences. Now, some provisos. First off, I did no gaming on this machine at all. This is not a gaming machine, has dedicated Intel graphics, so yeah. Oh, actually, I lied about that. I'm pretty sure, actually, that I did. I feel like I installed Hearthstone on this at one point or the other. Maybe I have uh, uninstalled it since then. I don't really remember. I've been using this for so long that I can't remember everything that I've done on it. But I, I believe at some point I actually installed Hearthstone on it through either Lutris or Bottles. Oh, you want? I bet you that's where that's where it was. I bet you it was bottles. Yeah, it was it was a bottle that I installed this on. So that's about the limit of my gaming on this machine. So yeah, it it worked fine on bottles because at one point I couldn't get Hearthstone to work on my Open Susan machine, so I had to come use Hearthstone on the laptop, and it worked fine. But that was the only gaming that I did, so I don't have any gaming to test or B-roll to show you guys. In fact, I have no B-roll at all to show you guys. You guys have just been staring at the NeoFetch of of this before, except for the entire video. But overall, yeah, I didn't do any gaming on this. I've just been doing uh, Python programming on this. Basically, that's all I've been doing. And it, it has been, like I said, it's been a really good experience. I, th and, and this is going to sound really weird coming from me. If you guys know me at all and you've watched any of my videos, you know that I'm not a GNOME guy, like at all. But I think from my experiences that GNOME makes a better immutable desktop environment for immutable distros than KDE does. KDE just has these little things that like the global thing that just don't work for whatever reason. Now, the global theme installation on a normal Linux distribution doesn't always work either. So maybe they just need to actually fix that instead of just ignoring it for the last five years. You know, it's been broken ever since I came to Linux and actually six years now and it hasn't been fixed so i shouldn't be surprised but it feels like it's truly broken on immutable distros and that's something that they should definitely look at so it feels like gnome would be a better choice but outside of those little bitsy pain points for the most part definitely the U blue version of kino white has been better it's been more cohesive been more stable and just overall it has worked better than the original Kino White did a year ago. Now, like I said, I can't tell you whether or not that Kino White has gotten better. Haven't used it. So if that's something that you want to take me to take a look at again, you guys can leave a comment in the comment section below and kind of let me know. But overall, using Kino White on a laptop has just been a very, very good experience. Now, one of the things I like about Ublue so much, and I've made a video on Ublue before, 
just a very surface level, you know, kind of first look of you blue is that if I wanted to, I could very easily go grab one of their other images and put it on here. So if I wanted to use Budgie or if I wanted to use Sway or if I wanted to use, you know, Gnome, I could do that very easily. I just go grab one of those images, rebase to it. And within five minutes, I'll have switched to that new desktop environment. So that's what makes you blue really awesome. And all of those images come with the benefits that they build in. So, you know, they'll, they'll all have DistroBox installed. They'll all have the codecs and stuff all put together in the package without you having to deal around with it. They'll all have every, the FlatHub and everything automatically enabled so that you can actually use FlatHub. Uh, although um, base level Fedora has that now too. But when I first installed this, they didn't. So it's it's a good thing to have so you get all those benefits and the ability to switch back and forth between the different desktop environments whatever you want if that's what you choose to do and i really like that project quite a lot and i'm just kind of happy that i've been using it for so long and it's just been a very good experience so a very rambly video i i'm fully aware of that but what else is new so that is it for this video if you have thoughts comments on uh, Kino, what you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. This is my first experience of running something through a capture card and actually making a video on it. So hopefully, when I go through and edit this, it actually turned out okay. If it didn't, I'm gonna have to start over again, which will just make me very, 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 very happy. Uh, also, not happy. <laughs> but anyways, if you have, uh, if you haven't already, leave a thumbs up on this video. It'd really help the channel. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can also head on over to the shop where you'll find uh, a whole bunch of merch. You'll find desk mats and hats and water bottles and all sorts of stuff. All that stuff goes directly towards helping me make more Linux content. So if you like this kind of content and you want some awesome merch, head on over there at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There's where, that's where you'll find all of that stuff. And uh, stay tuned. There'll be some deals coming up uh, in the next week or so. So uh, check, make sure you check those out. I'll make sure to post those on the community page on Mastodon and on Discord as well. So thanks everybody for watching. Thanks everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube, I should say. I, I, did, I do remember how to make, do an ending. So... Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just wouldn't have anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly, truly do appreciate it. You get just seriously, thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.